Hey there guys, welcome back. It, it's been a while and there's many reasons for that, I'll go into them a bit later, but let's just start off with a sneak peek of what you'll be seeing next time. It's the Gemini capsule, as beautifully made and rendered by the FASA mod, and yeah, it's it's amazing. All the different components, you can piece them together to make your own play, your own capsule arrangements, they fit with the stock parts, and the best part I think, the launch towers. Amazing. But yeah, that's what you're going to be seeing next time as I go through the Gemini program. But this time, let's do this. This is my Molnir M rocket. And on top is something that is... People call it the Gemini Twin. They were both developed around the same time. Both had very similar launch specifications and mission profiles. Here it is. This is the Voshkod rocket. And you'll see a lot more of that in the video to come. So let's get ready for takeoff. There's no sound in this one because I haven't yet completely set up my new version of Kerbal Space Program. This is uh, this is 0.242, which is the newest patch uh, out last week. And this is amazing because they've introduced a 64-bit version into Kerbal Space Program, which you would think, amazing, I can now play with all of my mods. Except it's really the least stable thing I've ever used in my entire life. So I will be using that, but I'll be using it for my career mode, which is going to be starting next week. And that's going to be using the science packages and the new economy model, which I've been wanting for so, so long. So thank you, squad. And I've been playing that, the stock version of that game on 64-bit, and it works like a dream. As soon as you start to put mods on it, it becomes an absolute dog and it crashes every five seconds. So yeah, looking at the launch, it's a pretty similar launch to my other R7 rocket family launches you've seen me do for the Russian, uh, the Soviet type launches. So there's nothing special about this one particularly. It's just the mission type, which is amazing. This is Voshkod 2 that I'm launching. And this mission was the first to take a spacewalk. This was um, done by the Soviets before the Americans. This is their first. And Gemini was soon soon to follow. So I'll be giving you that video next time, but as we see the separation of the... Ooh. See, I've still not got that worked out. I put a nice pretty camera on it because I wanted to show you it working perfectly, but it didn't work when I recorded it. It worked when I practiced, but not this time. So, you know, screw it. In in the good Kerbal fashion, let's just just forget that. You know, explosions happened. That's That's fine for Kerbals. They're happy with that. So this stage is almost about... Well, it's about to... Overheat or run out of fuel? I think it's going to run out of fuel first, so. And just pitching over now because I don't want to go too high. And separation. There we go. And get rid of the fairing. And inside we now have our exposed Voshkod 2 capsule. But we've really got to circularize that orbit, otherwise it's going to be burning up straight away. So I'm going to sort that out. Let's just uh, extend the antennas. And I'll show you the real Voshkod later, because I, I think this is for using mostly stock parts, except for that big bulbous capsule on front. It's it's quite it's quite quite realistic in terms of the, the physical aspect of it. It's hugely overpowered, though. Those orange things, they're all fuel tanks. So it's got, you know, probably enough fuel to get it to the moon and back several times. Which the actual Voshkod didn't. It just had a retro rocket on the front of the nose, which they could use if they needed it. But I still have another stage full of fuel. The upper stage of the Molnir M. Which I'm going to be using to mostly circularize it. Not the whole way. I want it to be able to return and burn up. But then I'm going to... Uh, detach, let the stage burn up, and I'll just be left with my capsule in orbit, hopefully. And, you know, attempting to minimize the, the space debris of the whole thing. So now would be a good a time as any, I guess, to tell you why I've not done a videos in a long time, actually. It's, it's a couple of months. Uh, you know, two things. Firstly, you know, it was the summer. Um, <laughs> summer... Hatus, hiatus, hatus hernia, hiatus hernia, Haitians, yeah, something something about Haiti. Uh, yeah, that's why I haven't done any videos in a while, as you see the retro rockets firing that stage away. 
So yeah, that that's basically long, long, the long reason why I haven't done any videos. The other reason is that I got a job a couple of months ago. Um, and that's been eating up so much of my time due to, you know, Mexican employment laws. They're the worst I've ever faced. So, you know, no hours for doing anything I want to do. But that's where you can come in. Thank you to the people who have already given me some help on Patreon. Remember, if you can click the link, you can help me out for as little as one oozed, one US dollar. And that is paid every time I submit content. You can do as little or as much as you like, and you can set monthly limits so you never spend too much. But yeah, the reason I have been giving myself to that is so that I can, you know, support myself with a job. I have to eat like everybody else. And it's been a lot of time I've not been able to give to Kerbal Space Program, or indeed any computer games. So this is why I'm just about getting back into it now. I've got my full timetable, the training's over, I can use my days when I have free time to do stuff like this, which I still love to do so much. And yeah, this is just about ready, this is the probe. As you can see the comparison between the Gemini probe, they look incredibly different, but in terms of mission profiles, they were the first to carry multiple people, um, there's a large bulbous airlock on the side of the Voschkot though, which I've not modelled in mine, and you can see it extended here. This was inflated and then pressurised, and the astronaut would stand up inside it before before leaving. It was the first fully functional airlock, which Gemini didn't try to do, they just opened the door and stood up. They did standing tests, is what they were called. But yeah, as you can see, it looks it looks quite similar, I'm really happy with this, except for the, like I say, the, the extendable airlock. Um, but the point of this mission is to try to do this first spacewalk. And this is going to be the first one my Kerbals are doing in this playthrough of the game. They've never done a spacewalk before. So, you know, let's see how it goes. And the mods I'm using, I'm going to put in the description so you can get that nice Soyuz-looking um, orbital module, which I've used for, for the re-entry capsule in this, um, what I'm calling the Kerb Shod, it's really the, the Vosh God probe. And this is what the interior of it looks like. It's it's very well rendered. I'm I'm loving the mod community in Kerbal Space Program that they actually put detail into everything. Some games you get nice 3D exterior models, but people are really going into the environments and, and fleshing out their mods, which is absolutely amazing. And it means I'll download them, so thanks for doing that, people. So here we go, the first tentative steps outside, and he's released. Now, the in, in, if you go back and look at the pictures, you can see that on the end of the airlock was a camera. And that took the one successful photo of the EVA. And you can see it here. Which, you know, it's a pretty grainy picture. Um, they did have multiple cameras, but apparently there was a failure on the cameras. And rumoured lack of mobility in the suit meant that he couldn't take a photo of Voshkod 2 on the way out of the airlock. So that's the one picture we have of this mission, and as you can see, my, my Kerbal is thoroughly enjoying himself with his jetpack, which they didn't have. The, the Russians were just tethered to the outside of the vehicle, they drifted away, and the first spacewalk lasted for 12 minutes, from depressurization of the airlock to repressurization of the airlock. And what, well, let's have a look at the actual guy who did it. It's Alexei Leonov who has the biggest balls of steel of, I think, anybody who's ever been into space. Seeing as not, well, not only was he the first person to, okay, hang on, yeah, this isn't grabbing, okay. Having a bit of difficulty grabbing, but yeah. It wasn't that easy for Alexei Leonov to get back into the capsule either. His suit wasn't pressure regulated well enough. Um, it had an outward valve to get rid of waste oxygen, basically he vented his carbon dioxide into space, and it's thought that that valve wasn't as clean as it could be. So, yeah, his suit inflated, and he was like the Michelin man, he couldn't get back inside the airlock afterwards, so he had to vent his oxygen supply from his backpack, and the suit, as well as the droplets of sweat that had collected in his boots because he was overheating, he had to vent all of that into space, and he completely depressurized his suit before he could get back inside the airlock. And my Kerbal still can't do it, so I'm going to keep trying this. I think I might need to rotate the spaceship. It's probably just a camera angle issue. I could change the view or rotate the ship. I think, I think I'm going to have to ro yeah, rotate the ship. That's, that's, that's not working even, even a little bit. But at least they've got jetpacks. 
Because if he was tethered, we'd be in like a, a, a Sandra Bullock in gravity kind of situation, just swinging around the outside of the ship. So yeah, let's try and get back. And yeah, they were using a, a Bearcut spacesuit, which is the one that they use basically for all of the launches up until now. Except they could attach a backpack and a hose to it, so they could actually go outside the ship. And when they were back inside, the extendable airlock just jettisoned and they returned with a ball re-entry vehicle, much like the Vostok mission that Yuri Gagarin did. It's basically the same test bed of ship, except this one was a little bit bigger. It had a capacity for three crew, which is something which Gemini didn't do, that could only manage two. And they were rotated at 90 degree angles around the centre axis of the ship. So let's just arrange for re-entry. Pointing prograde. And there's no RCS on this, um, which there probably should be. Because, I mean, I, I feel a bit cheaty to just, just use the electricity generated by the, the pro body and things like that. So let's uh, cross-feed fuel, because I realised that the cone part I did there doesn't have any actual fuel cross-feed in it. I have to do it manually. But that also means I can only burn for about 10 seconds at a time, which is incredibly frustrating. Which is why I'm going to cut most of this piece out of the video. Because I the, it wasn't enough thrust provided with the fuel I had, so I just had to keep you know refilling and refilling and refilling. So I have, as you can see, the camera angle shifted, so I do have some kind of re-entry, but it wasn't the altitude I wanted, because I wanted to land it, uh, you know, so it didn't burn up, because I had, do have deadly re-entry in this version of Kerbal Space Program. So yeah, cut! And there we are, ready for separation. Now, the re-entry module of Voshkod 2 is basically the same re-entry module they would use on the following Soyuz missions. It... If you, well, if, again, if you mentioned the gravity, if you've seen gravity, they used the re-entry jets on that to, propel, to propel the uh, re-entry module. Now, this re-entry module looks a bit different. It's not uh, like bell jar shaped. It's spherical, but it had an ablative shield as well as being spherical. It just burned away and it had these retro rockets because it was a lot heavier. And this was the first Russian rocket to actually take its crew the full way down. They didn't parachute out above the, the ground, so it needed that because they had the people inside and they didn't want to shatter their spines when they hit the floor. Which is the primary reason that people uh, bailed out before then. So the Voshkod program basically came to a halt here. They decided to move on to bigger and better things with Soyuz, whereas the Gemini was seen as an actual... Uh, Proposition for getting to the moon. They were thinking about doing a bigger version of Gemini. And we'll look at Gemini a lot more next time as I look at the docking, uh, the rendezvous, and as well look at, looking at the mod in, in more general, the FASA mod, which I think is beautiful, well created, and very loving, as well as looking at some speculative things that were planned but never done. Uh, so yeah, well, I'll see you guys next time. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And as well, if you can, pop over to my Patreon page, have a look. See if you think it was something you would like to do. I would appreciate any help. It would allow me to keep making videos like this. And it would also allow the quality to increase because I can give more time and more effort and more amazing technology into these videos. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye.